Hello guys, welcome back to Rapid Dentistry. In this video, we have taken up the topic developmental disturbances, which is in your oral pathology, right? So developmental disturbances involves your all the disturbances taking place during the intrauterine life, right? When the kid is in the womb of the mother, whatever mutations happen, those called those uh, lead to some diseases. Those are known as developmental disturbances, right? And we are particularly talking about the disturbances of oral and paraoral structures. That is your mouth and the structures around your mouth, which involves your jaws, your tongue, palate, lips, teeth, whatever you can think of, your oral mucosa and everything, right? So firstly, starting with the developmental disturbances of jaws, we have five types of diseases. That is your ergnathia, micrognathia, macrognathia, facial hemihypertrophy and your facial hemiatrophy. Okay. Now, ergnathia, as the name suggests, that ergnathia, that means no jaw. Right. It is also known as autocephaly. So, what it is, basically, your complete or partial absence of the jaw is there. Okay. So, either the jaw is not present at all. For example, in this image, you can see that the mandible is haven't formed at all. Okay. And it is a severely lethal condition. Okay. The kid is not going to survive after this. And it can also be partial. For example, in maxilla, pre-maxilla is missing. Okay. Or a ramus is missing or a part of body is missing condyle is missing in that sense only partial jaw is missing okay so that can also be possible now the inheritance pattern of ergnathia is your autosomal recessive okay now the reason why ergnathia happens is due to failure of migration of neural crest mesenchyme okay so these are the cells in your intrauterine life which you know makes a lot of structures like your teeth itself is formed by your neural crest mesenchyme. So similarly these are also responsible to form your jaws. Now if these cells are unable to migrate, if they fail to migrate to their the position you know they intend to where they intend to form the jaws. So basically jaws will go missing right. So that would lead to your ergnathia. That is your first anomaly during your intrauterine life. That is your developmental disturbance. Okay. Talking about the next, we have micrognathia. Again, as the name suggests to you, that micrognathia, that means a small jaw. Jaw is small. Now, either the jaw can, is the originally small. Okay, the jaw is actually small, then it is called as true macro, uh, true micrognathia. Or the jaw is not small, but the face is large itself. So basically, relatively, we, it seems like the jaw is smaller, but actually the face size is larger. Or for example, mandible is normal sized but maxilla is enlarged so it seems like you know uh, the mandible is smaller so in that sense it is pseudo micrognathia right now the true micrognathia can be congenital or acquired okay congenital means it is present by birth okay during birth as well so we have some syndromes which are you know uh, having this true micrognathia condition okay and these syndromes are treacher collin syndrome and your peer robin syndrome okay so these syndromes basically have your uh, jaw which is smaller okay we also have acquired type of micrognathia that is if the you know child develops a habit of mouth breathing then the jaws tend to be smaller Okay, for example, if mouth breathing is happen, happening, then your uh, maxilla basically remains smaller. It doesn't, you know, develop naturally. 
as it should be developing okay and the second thing is your ankylosis of tmj so even if your tmj is ankylosed your mandible won't be able to grow naturally so this is for mandible that mandible won't be able to grow naturally as it should be growing right so those conditions are acquired it's not present by birth naturally right now we have talked about a syndrome called perry robin syndrome so even in this image you can see you know how micrognathia agnathia looks like that you know the mandible is not at all developed here uh, even in the uh, side section you can see that the mandible is the chin is retruded very much right so in perry robin syndrome what happens is we already know that micrognathia is a feature of perry robin syndrome so we have small jaw small mandible to be precise so what happens in perry robin syndrome is it is a triad what is a triad so basically it consists of three symptoms that is your uh, micrognathia basically your mandible ha isn't developed during the intrauterine life so what should be happening is your tongue actually descends downwards when the mandible develops during the uh, during the your uh, intrauterine life your tongue descends down and then your palate forms so that is what should be happening naturally but in this case what happens is your mandible couldn't you know uh, develop so your tongue uh, didn't descend naturally as it should be descending and it you know lies posteriorly and upwards now due to that your palate hasn't formed as it should be formed so there is a cleft in the palate too okay now also as you can imagine that the tongue is posteriorly and upwardly located so the baby is not going to is very hard for him to breathe okay so breathing difficulties your airway obstruction is very common and it is uh, lethal okay so there is a high mortality rate in your perry robin syndrome okay and the pathogenesis we already have seen that the mandibular growth you don't know it arrests and which prevents your normal descent of the tongue downwards and due to that your palatal shells are not able to fuse together okay now you may be wondering what is glossoptosis so glossoptosis is nothing but your posteriorly and upward positioning of the tongue which is due to your uh, non development of the mandible okay now clinical feature you can observe that the baby has a bird like face so this is a convexity and looks like a bird like face and you know that the obstruction airway obstruction it, it's a high possibility which would lead to a lethal condition and high mortality rate right now the third developmental disturbance we are going to see is your macrognathia so micro we have seen agnathia we have seen macro means large jaw okay so large jaw it can be generalized or localized so what is generalized means the whole body that is your every bone of the body is enlarged so why would that happen is due to due to some adenoma like a tumor in the pituitary gland your growth hormone levels increases which would lead to your pituitary gigantism okay so that would lead to enlargement of every bone of the body right so that is generalized now localized meaning that only the facial bones are enlarged right so in acromegaly we know that it is also due to your uh, increased growth hormone but it is after your uh, epiphyseal closure right that it happens in adults that pituitary uh, gigantism happens in children that is before your epiphyseal closure this is after epiphyseal closure so we already know that after epiphyseal closure your bone height 
cannot increase so it can only uh, enlarge in size your facial bones so that is what happens in acromegaly right so in this image you can see that the patient has acromegaly and you see that the mandible is little overgrown is enlarged so that is your macrognathia this is localized right now we also have conditions like paget's disease fibrous dysplasia which is basically your bone diseases uh, similarly in this picture you can see your leonatiasis osea that is your lion like face as you can see the lion like face is again your macrognathia because uh, your maxilla is overgrown here right so your maxilla has undergone macrognathia here so we we have seen that macrognathia can be generalized localized generalized is that every bone uh, is increasing in size which is in children and localized is seen in conditions like acromegaly paget's disease and your fibrous dysplasia okay now the fourth uh, disturbance we are running to is your facial hemihypertrophy what this facial hemihypertrophy is that your half of the face see here half of the face is hypertrophied that is your increased size of the face what is what is hypertrophy increased size what is hyperplasia increased number cool so half of the face that is hemi hypertrophy is occurring here that is your increased size now not just the face size increase we have macroglossia that is your increased size of the tongue we also have increased size of your teeth and we have early eruption as well that is your teeth uh, the normal eruption time of the teeth before that teeth erupts so that is your early eruption which is like you know much before the actual eruption time of the teeth so this is your facial hemi hypertrophy condition now similar similar to that we have facial hemi atrophy condition that you must have guessed it you know half of the face is getting atrophied here and this condition is given a special name which is your perry robberg syndrome now don't confuse it with pierre robin syndrome we already seen that the glossoptosis your micrognathia and your cleft palate is seen in pierre robin okay and perry rombeck what is perry rombeck we have facial hemi atrophy you can clearly see that you know half of her face that is your right side of her face has undergone atrophy right and again not just her face but the tongue and your uh, mucosa your teeth everyone you know is everything is getting affected and anophthalmos is seen that is your sunken eyeball okay it is common in more common in females and even uh, in this image uh, right side is affected but you know normally left side is affected more than the right side and it is again it is very important self limited atrophy it is self limited you know it is it gets treated on its own it corrects on its own okay matlab basically it stops after some time okay and we have something known as coup de sabre what is coup de sabre this is basically a line which you know distinguishes demarcates that the half face this half of the face is atrophied and this half of the face is normal so this line which you know distinguishes both the halves are known as this line is known as coup de sabre and not just this your upper canine radiculum megaly also happens that your the root of the upper canine so this is upper canine so the root of the upper canine is enlarged all the other teeth are atrophied that is smaller in size but just the root of the upper canine is enlarged so that's it 
and your salivary glands are affected as well they are also getting atrophied and your saliva flow salivary flow also decreases in this so that is your periromberg syndrome facial hemiatrophy now moving towards the developmental disturbances of lips and palate so we have seen uh, the disturbances of the jaws now the second type uh, the second uh, category we are moving towards is the lip, lips and the palate so what we can see uh, what diseases and what uh, conditions we can see here is your commissural lips fistulas your vanderwood syndrome very important then your cleft lip cleft palate your uh, colitis glandularis and colitis granulomatosa okay so these two terms are uh, very similar so these need to be differentiated right and other than that we have some syndromes called as escher syndrome and peutz jeghers syndrome so let's see these one by one let's first go and see that you know what is vanderwood syndrome very important it's very very important for every exam right so vanderwood syndrome is an autosomal dominant condition so what is an its inheritance pattern it is autosomal dominant and it is due to your gene mutation which gene mutation your irf6 and your grhl3 so these genes gets mutated during your intrauterine life and would lead to this syndrome called as vanderwood syndrome so in this image what you can see so basically you can see that the lips we have something uh, round round structures you know medially in the medial side of the lips these are called as pits of the lower lip right so these are called lip pits and other than that we have cleft lip and or cleft palate so cleft palate uh, and cleft lip so both may not necessarily be present but most of the times both are present okay cleft lip plus cleft palate it may be plus minus okay maybe cleft lip alone is present or it may be you know cleft lip and cleft palate is present and the lower lip pits are obviously 100% present in this syndrome okay now uh, from these pits what happens is some sparse exudate exudate comes out now what is this exudate coming out from these pits these are from your accessory salivary glands so basically this is nothing but your saliva why because we have some salivary glands present here which are you know accessory salivary glands and they are secreting some exudate which is coming out of these lip pits so that is what your vanderwood syndrome was all about that is it is your autosomal resist uh, dominant condition and it is due to these gene mutation okay and it is you know it consists of your uh, pits of the lower lip and your cleft lip uh, and your cleft palate now moving to the second condition of your lips that is your colitis glandularis so colitis the name itself refers to your lips inflammation of the lips is what is known as colitis now glandularis that that is it involves your glands that is your accessory glands now it is the another name for this condition is called as actinic colitis now this actinic colitis may may lead to your squamous cell carcinoma okay so this can be your pre malignant condition so this is very uh, important again so your colitis glandularis what happens is that is your lower lip as you can see that specifically your lower lip enlarges it it you know progressively it enlarges so as the lower lip is enlarging what happens is your mucosa gets everted that is this your vermilion border between the your uh, mucosa and your uh, lip skin 
this vermilion border gets outwards and your mucosa is everted this mucosa comes in contact with your external environment and your air and whatever present outside so this mucosa is not used to of those conditions so this mucosa gets dried cracked it you know it is irritated chronically and and as the condition progresses you get all the other things like ulceration of the mucosa fibrosis and everything okay so we have basically three types uh, of colitis glandularis we have classified uh, this condition also but before that let's see that you know we have seen that how is it happening right because the mucosa is everted it it's get irritated chronically and that is how you know uh, fibrosis and ulceration is taking place now this is more common in your male than female and the age group is your fourth to sixth decade and this lip swelling is asymptomatic there's no pain or anything it's just that you know there is some uh, inflammation and irritation and you know burning sensation all those things but not pain or anything so it is more or less uns- asymptomatic and we have classified this condition into your simple uh, super, uh, superficial and your deep suppurative so simple is your as shown in this figure this is almost simple there is no uh, fibrosis no ulceration no pus coming out right the second condition is your suppurative that is your you know pus is oozing out there's some ulceration there's some fibrosis all those and then the, we have the third uh, classified as you know deep suppurative that is you know it is very like um, very ulcerative that you know and it is more chances of getting converted into your squamous cell carcinoma that is your cancer okay now the treatment for this condition would be you know antibiotics and steroids steroids is for treating your inflammation going on okay and we have antibiotics so the next uh, condition we have we have is your colitis granulomatosa which is you know you need to differentiate this term from the colitis glandularis so that is that is related to some gland right glandularis and this is granulomatosa that is it is related to some granuloma that is it is a chronic condition okay and we know that granulomas are seen in chronic conditions right so in this condition we have granulomatous inflammation that is we have chronic swelling of the lip okay so basically chronic swelling that is it is from a long duration of time and it has like histopathologically if we see we have seen what is a uh, non cageating granuloma is seen in the histopath slides of this condition and the important thing is that this condition is related to your michel mercalson rosenthal syndrome okay this syndrome has your, uh, your colitis granulomatosa it has this but along with that it also have have your facial palsy and plicated tongue so in this image you can see the what is you know plicated tongue so you see some fissures and grooves going on in this tongue right so that is your plicated tongue and other than that we you have facial palsy that is your facial nerve is involved cool uh these three things you know comprises of your mischer melkerson rosenthal syndrome okay and again uh, the treatment for this condition would be again steroids to uh, treat the inflam- inflammation and your nsaids and your antibiotics So that is your uh, colitis granulomatosa. Now another syndrome related to your lips. That is your developmental disturbance of the lips. We have Escher syndrome. It is another triad of symptoms. Okay, what triad you see here? You see blepharoclasis. 
so that is the swelling that over the eye you are seeing here now that is known as your blepharocalasis okay now other than that you also see this double lip here you know beneath the your proper lip you have a you know enlarged mucosa that is you know giving a sight of double lip giving an appearance of double lip okay now these uh, along with these two symptoms we have non toxic thyroid enlargement as well so these three things comprises of your asher syndrome okay the next syndrome we are considered uh, we are considering is your hereditary intestinal polyps that is your peutz jagger syndrome so you might have heard about it like many times but you know what is peutz jagger syndrome as you can see in this images it has something to do with your you know these black black um, spots that is you know seen in your on your lips and your perioral structures and that is something to do with your you know intestinal mucosa something is happening here and here that is your peutz jagger right so try to remember all these things by you know image based try to you know uh, remember the image related to these uh, syndromes and and you will easily remember what the you know everything about it so the first thing seen is your intestinal hematomatous polyps so these things you see here these are known as polyps polyps are seen in your intestinal mucosa so these are hematoma what is hematoma hematoma is like a, a tissue which is native to this location right so this is this tissue is normally present in this location only but this is you know dividing uh, unnecessarily dividing more than usual that is your hematoma hematoma okay so you have intestinal hematomas which are you know polyps and you have a uh, melanotic macules so these black black spots gray spots you see on the lips of this uh, lady is your uh, what is what it is these are mucocutaneous melanotic macule why macule because these are not raised macule is basically less than 1 cm and it is not raised like a papule or a you know uh, bulla all those things so these are not raised then then these are what macules and this peutz jagger syndrome is again your autosomal dominant condition occurs due to stk11 gene mutation very important this genes are very important okay stk11 gene that is your gene responsible to the causation of this syndrome uh the features also what you can see in this syndrome is your intestinal bleeding so these polyps they not just are present there they you know bleed whenever you know the stool is passing through the intestine it, it gets irritated and it, it you know bleeds profusely we also have menstrual irregular, irregularity present in this syndrome so that's it for this video and we are going to complete this topic in part 2 of this video okay so uh, let's see you in the next part thank you